The Yoko Factor. In a desperate bid for ratings, the producers decide to hoodwink us into thinking we're getting an episode guest starring the Beatles. We open with an initiative guy talking to Steve Martin about the state of the initiative and Riley. They say they're getting overwhelmed with all the demonic activity and that they don't have much info on Buffy calling her just a girl. But Buffy was working with them, even if only for a bit. I would think they would have all the info they would need on her, especially since she wasn't hiding from them at that point. And if the initiative has been around for a while... Buffy has stopped all of these huge world-ending events right in the middle of town. Yeah, but we did see before that they didn't even know the Slayer was real. Okay, well, let's just chalk it up to them being dumb. Yeah. Spike tells Adam that Buffy is a bigger threat than he thinks, but Adam only seems to be intrigued by her. And he asks Spike what's so special about this Slayer when Spike has already killed two of them before. Spike says he's had crappy luck and his chip prevents him from doing anything, and Adam reiterates that he'll take the chip out once he has Buffy. They discuss getting Buffy's friends out of the way first, which Spike says he will take care of. Buffy gets to her dorm and finds Willow absent, but she did leave her sad string music behind. So I assumed she was sad about something with Riley, but it could have just been because it's this show and she's always sad about something. And it turns out to be something that didn't even happen in this show, but in Freakin' Angel, which had me confused for a while. Xander brings Riley a change of clothes at the ruins of the high school, where they mention that Buffy was with Angel in LA. And at one point, Riley says, Take it you're not an Angel fan either. And for a second, I thought we were breaking the fourth wall, but it turns out he was just talking to Xander. And Xander points out that Buffy and Angel had sex at some point which Riley wasn't aware of, even though Buffy had previously said that she was going to tell Riley everything. So, she's a liar. <laughs> we cut to Giles singing Freebird, which is a long song, so the scene goes on for a while. And what is this, the third time in as many episodes as we've had a musical performance for him? Was he trying to launch a music career, or did he have an album out at this point or something? Hmm, maybe. And he is startled when he sees Spike. Spike tells him he knows about files in the initiative regarding Adam, but in return for obtaining them, he wants blood, money, and a guarantee that he will not be killed. And instead of killing him on the spot, Giles agrees. Even though he says out loud that it's very convenient that Spike is giving them just what they need, just when they need it. And Spike says he'll only do it if Buffy herself agrees, telling Giles that Buffy treats him like nothing more than a retired librarian. Which is literally what he is. Yeah. Well, actually, he got fired. Right? I can't remember. Or was it just because the school exploded? Well, was he able to get fired? Because his boss got eaten by a giant snake. Yeah. <laughs> and he blew up his own place of employment, so I don't know. <laughs> Willow and Tara are playing with their new cat, so I'm glad we at least get some continuity in this show. Willow says she always assumed that she and Buffy would always be roommates, but now it seems like they hardly see each other because they're always busy with other stuff. How sad. Riley goes to visit Buffy. And he says, I patched into the initiative's frequency so they can't track me, which assumes that they're only using walkie-talkies to track everything, and that they're not assuming Riley would do that since he was their leader and are just giving him false information. And again, the initiative knows where Buffy lives. I, I don't understand why it's so hard for them to track people down. Well, this is a comment I made, I think, in the last episode, where I said I'm going to be really irritated if they're all just hanging out in their normal places and not being actively kidnapped by the initiative, but we've already seen they're all just hanging out in their normal places. Buffy says that Angel upset her, and Riley reacts very dickishly. When she says they can talk about it later, Riley leaves, which upsets her. And makes this whole scene completely pointless. But he manages to make at least three jokes about his pants in just two minutes, which was stupid and impressive all at once. <laughs> Xander brings Spike a uniform to sneak into the initiative, plus a gun. But when Spike tries to point it at Xander, it activates the chip, and Xander says it's not real anyway. And Spike makes Xander feel like shit because he says he's no longer useful, indicating that he was useful at some point, which I don't know if I buy that. He tries to make it sound like he thought the others were saying Xander was joining the army, which was something that came out of nowhere, as did Xander's reaction to it, and even Spike points out how irrational Xander's reaction is. Buffy is out checking out a cave with her dumb-looking initiative gun, and she runs into idiot number one, who was also investigating the cave. They throw some barbs at each other before going in to check it out. And from the moment they enter, they keep loudly arguing. Idiot number one says the initiative has started to fall apart since they ran into Buffy, and they're about to start trading blows when Adam shows himself. Buffy gets thrown around. 
idiot number one shoots his electro gun, which doesn't work. It actually seems to charge at him up because he's running that upgrade to Windows 98. <laughs> and idiot number one shows how he earned that title by running straight at Adam and getting his stupid ass impaled. I give this episode an A+. An idiot to the last. Buffy gets zapped by the electro gun, but easily recovers and runs out before falling down a very slight slope and hitting her head on a rock, knocking herself out. So much for the Slayer. Yeah, it seems odd that a rock would knock her out when getting punched in the head by super strong demons does not knock her out, but whatever. Yeah, it's a good thing Adam wasn't there to see it, because then he would know her weakness. <laughs> slight slopes with rocks at the bottom. Meanwhile, Spike fakes exhaustion as he busts into Giles' house to give the initiative disc to Willow. And he's breathing hard, saying he was being chased, but vampires don't breathe. Again... These characters should know that at this point. And these characters aren't even smart enough to consider whether the initiative guys supposedly in pursuit might track him to the house. Well, if they just need a walkie-talkie, and then they could figure it out. They turn into Channel 2, because the initiative guys are thinking, man, we can't be Channel 1, that's too obvious. <laughs> you would think that if Buffy knows that Riley set something up like that, she would tell Willow, because Willow is clearly smarter than Riley. She should be able to figure that out. I like the encrypted disc, too, how it not only had characters doing vertical matrix stuff but horizontal matrix stuff too yeah that makes it doubly hard to decrypt Whew. half drunk giles says he won't pay spike until willow says the info is useful so spike asks if giles ranks even lower than willow now and then he directs his disdain towards willow and tara and makes them feel like shit telling them they're no longer useful either he says the others said that willow wasn't as good with computers now that she started hanging out with tara and playing with magic and that they said she was just going through a phase down in the initiative all the demons are going crazy and they get a message requesting backup from some of their agents, but everyone just sits there listening to it instead of responding. Riley intercepts it and heads out. And he finds a bunch of army guys being attacked by Angel. Ugh. And for some reason, Angel recognizes Riley immediately. Riley asks if Angel has lost his soul again, and instead of just saying no, Angel responds aggressively, saying that's none of his business. And they start to fight. And for some reason, Riley is able to hold his own for much longer than is realistic. And the setting and the way they were throwing each other around reminded me of the fight and They Live. Do not. <laughs> I knew you were going to be upset, but yes, that's true. Do not compare <laughs> this piece of shit to that really interesting fight. <laughs> this wasn't a bad fight, though. I mean, it was definitely the high point of the entire episode, which, I mean, you granted that doesn't have to go very high, but still. I don't know. I paused on Buffy's chocolate poster. I was looking at all the different types of chocolate. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> And Angel wins the fight, but when a Humvee pulls up, they both flee. Angel shows up at Buffy's, followed shortly by Riley with a gun. He was right behind him, so Angel didn't detect him, just following him. And they have a weird, nonsensical argument where Angel doesn't want to explain anything to Buffy, and Riley doesn't want to explain anything to Buffy, and they start fighting again before Buffy steps between them, telling them to stop acting like children. And for once, I actually agreed with Buffy. She tells Riley she needs to talk to Angel in private. Riley says he's not leaving, so they walk out into the hall. Why couldn't she just talk in front of him? If I were in Riley's shoes and I was dating a girl that acted like that, especially with her ex-boyfriend, I would be out of there with not a glance back. She rips into Angel for a bunch of stuff that happened in Angel, which I'm still not going to watch. Nice try. And he says that he came to apologize. By following her back to Sunnydale like a creep and beating up her boyfriend. And he even says, I was trying to make things better. Which was probably the dumbest line of dialogue in the episode. It's a pretty high bar, or low bar, I guess. I don't know. Whichever works better. <laughs> and they both laugh about it, showing their mutual lack of humanity, and Buffy's total disregard for Riley. And I know this is making it sound very personal. I have not been in this situation. I have not been in Riley's shoes. I just thought Buffy was a huge bitch in this episode. You know, more than usual. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about vampires. And I've never been a vampire. I've never gotten in a fight with a vampire. Angel asks if there's anything he can help with before he leaves, and instead of asking for his help and taking down Adam, Buffy says no. Spike tells Adam that he successfully made everybody feel like shit, but Adam says there's still one more thing they need to do. Buffy goes back to Riley and plays the victim when Riley says he thought she was going back to Angel. And she says, quote, Have I ever given you any reason to not trust me? Which was really funny. But he says no, because he's a dope. <laughs> oh, man. He tells her how much he's in love with her, and then Buffy decides that's the perfect moment to tell him that idiot number one is dead, which I had totally forgotten about. Yes, I had totally forgotten about that too. <laughs> she says that Adam killed him and she barely got away, which unintentionally made it sound like maybe she had killed him and was just making up a story. And for some reason, Riley decides that that's the breaking point and walks out, 
leaving idiot Buffy confused. <sighs> and at least I could sympathize with her in also being kind of confused. Back at Giles' house, Willow can't crack the initiative stuff. And everybody starts ripping into everybody else because of Spike's earlier comments. And all the while, Giles makes drunk, com uh, sorry, pissed comments, and Buffy keeps making impatient comments. Giles criticizes Buffy for not training lately, Buffy criticizes Xander for being useless, and they all start accusing each other of talking behind each other's back. And instead of clarifying things or pointing out that what everyone else is saying doesn't make sense, they all just keep arguing. Which is par for the course for this show. But I did like the part where Xander thought Buffy said he was stupid. This is stupid. Stupid? So you finally had the guts to say it to my face. I didn't say you were stupid. So stop being an idiot and let me fix this. And I also thought Tara and Anya hiding out in the bathroom was funny. And eventually Buffy storms out saying there's nothing they could possibly do to help her. We close at the last part of Adam's plan, which turns out to be Riley, who just shows up and says he's ready for the next episode. Gasp. To be continued. Unfortunately, the Yoko factor overall. The Buffy Riley Angel Triangle thing felt very fan y and Angel didn't actually end up doing anything, even when he specifically asks, is there anything I can do to help? I don't know what happened in Angel the show, and the events in this episode didn't really make me want to find out. It seemed like a lame excuse to have Riley and Angel fight each other, which lasted a whole 20 seconds before they both ran away. Thrilling. It was dumb, but not unexpected, how easy it was for Spike to be able to tear the entire group apart by just telling them they're dumb, and since they're all dumb, they all feed into it, and that's that. Plan successful. At least Adam is doing something now. I don't think we have too many episodes left in this season, and I don't really see him making it past this season. I hope he doesn't. I'm kind of hoping he turns Riley into some kind of cyborg too. That would fit the tone of what's been happening with Adam so far. I'm not saying that would be good. I'm just saying I'm hoping that would happen because it would just fit. Idiot number one dying felt completely pointless and uneventful, and it probably would have had a little more impact if idiot number two was there too, but he didn't show up in this episode at all. I wonder if he knows. Or maybe they're gonna tell him later, and then he'll cry like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this whole episode felt pretty inconsequential and nothing really happened other than the gang not liking each other. Buffy going off on her own, which Adam will use to his advantage. But 45 minutes was too much time for just that. Let's just get this Adam stuff over with and move on. I give it a D minus. I also gave it a D minus. I have no problems with the overall idea behind this episode, other than Spike and Adam feeling that any of Buffy's friends besides Willow are a threat. But the way Spike raised issues between them was not convincing at all, and mostly consisted of him pulling things up out of nowhere, and the other characters immediately overreacting without even stopping to ask what the hell he's talking about. Some of those issues were things that have already been dealt with in previous episodes and were seemingly resolved in those episodes, so having them suddenly be a big deal again didn't feel genuine at all. The scenes with the initiative seem to suggest that something is going to happen there, but I don't know if I really care what that's going to be at this point. Like you said, Angel showing up added absolutely nothing, didn't make much sense, and then he left. And before people say that it's because we didn't watch the Angel episode, that has nothing to do with his behavior with Riley, which was irrationally stupid even for Angel. Riley also acted like a child throughout the episode, and then Buffy treated him like total shit, and he just ate it right up. I am actually legitimately curious to find out what's going on with Riley and Adam. That is not something that has been set up in any way, and I'm really skeptical that it's going to make sense, but we'll see. And I kept forgetting about idiot number one dying, because it felt like it didn't matter. I'm glad that he's dead, but I really was hoping that they would drag that out at least a little bit more, because I really wanted to savor that. We are right next to the end of the season, and at least this episode clearly dealt with the main storyline, but breaking up the gang feels like a really insignificant thing, and I have no doubt that they'll just get right back together soon enough. And that apparently being a major part of Adam's plan doesn't exactly help to legitimize him as a major threat. And that's pretty much all that happened in the episode other than the very out-of-place Angel stuff, who I did not expect to see pop up at this point. At least it looks like he won't be in the next episode, even though again it doesn't make sense for Buffy not to ask for his help. And I still have hope that idiot number two will die before the end of the season. You know he will. Either that or... Adam will be like, you are my son. <laughs> Huge twist. Can't wait for that. 